Thank you very much and welcome to Games Master. Games Master was a trailblazing British TV show running for seven seasons between 1992 and 1998 before being rebooted in 2021. Combining a live studio audience, special guests and recorded segments, it served to both showcase the latest game releases and help viewers to solve their gaming dilemmas with a little help from the Games Master. In this video, I'll be speaking with Michael, one of the lucky kids who got to appear on Season 1. And 30 years later, he reveals that all is not quite as it seemed to the viewers at home. Tell me how it really was. It was nothing like that, dude. <laughs> I wish it was like that. So before we get into this, it's important to understand that this story takes place in 1991. Let me tell you about 1991. In 1991, there is no internet. Two years earlier, in 1989, Tim Berners-Lee starts to invent the internet. But Joe Public isn't going to be using the internet for another two to three years. And even then, it's going to be dial-up. Google is seven years away and broadband is nine years away. So my point is that in 1991, the way we get our information is very different. I'm glad you set the scene there because it was 1991. So think about that for a second. 1991, I was in the, uh, the year that I chose the options for GCSEs. It's a time to be getting serious. You know, you're 14, you're going to be choosing the subjects you're doing. And I was just into my video games, man. So that's like, that's, that's where we came from, right? And also think about this as well. So that's like the end of the 80s, early 90s, 1991. Up until that point, I came from, you know, the VIC-20, the Ataris, um, the, the Atari 2600 was made from, you know, real wood and plastic and have your top loading cartridges. And so, you know, Centipede, Pac-Man, uh, King Kong, like these games have been around since forever for us, right? But, um, I think by the time we got to 1991 or so, um, I think it was that point at which, and I could be wrong, so I haven't got my facts completely straight, but I think it was at a time in which we were now starting to get in towards uh, from 8-bit to 16-bit consoles. I think, I could be wrong, but it's around about that sort of time because I remember it was like a Commodore 64 and Amstrad, uh, or the consoles that we're talking about here, like the Sega Master Systems, uh, I had a Sega Master System, or the Nintendos, and so now it was about to be launching, and we had these two systems, we had one in the, the US and one in the UK, so in the US it was called the Sega Genesis, and in the UK it was called the Sega Mega Drive, and we were always behind, man, it was always Japan first, then the US, and then the UK, and... Um, Exactly that. There was no internet. So how did we get our information? For us, it was magazines, right? Like that, and they were expensive. These magazines, so like all your pocket money, went on these um, these magazines. When I think about it now, at the time, the magazines were about three, four, five quid a pop. Back then, it was a lot of money to be. I mean, I know magazines are expensive now, and so you'd be reading about these latest games that you weren't going to ever see on these shores for at least another six to twelve months. It's crazy. So you were seeing like these are the games that you can't play. This is what you. This is what they're playing in Japan right now. They will probably never see the light of day in the Western world because Japan had their own sort of. Uh, type of uh, gameplay and then you had stuff in the US and then they'll show you like look this is what we got in the US it's called like you know the Sega Genesis or it's called um, uh, I think it's Super Nintendo for example was called the Super Famicom in Japan it wasn't called the Super Nintendo I remember these names thinking when do we get one of these you know when do we get a go and so yeah magazines were my only source of information in terms of magazines like it wasn't cool dude it wasn't cool to like read computer magazines in those days not really i mean you know it wasn't cool to be called a nerd or a geek or anything <laughs> like that and you know whilst we didn't actually care um there was a little bit of like oh what are you mean it's a computer magazine i'm just reading my magazine so uh um to answer your question i think that's how i that's how i got my information but that's how i found out about games and master i think coming up so i was just hearing brap, 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 show brap, 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 video game brap. and i was like yes 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 i want to do it because again like who would have thought right this is the scene it was like this very sort of 
fringe kind of like geeky thing that we're doing anyway reading about you know in magazines and now i don't know if i read an article or something in there that there were murmurings or rumors that there was gonna be you know a television show about computer games like tv you know back in the days when tv wasn't this it was all eyes, you know, with your family and your friends. You would sit there. You might have been watching Dallas in the 80s with your family or Dynasty or then East End. And now you get to see on primetime TV, it's arrived, computer games. So that's pretty much uh, how I found out about it. And you now being being a 14-year-old uh, dork, I um, was like, how? How can we get access to this? And I think the reason, it wasn't just that I'd written, I read an article that this, this show was going to be released. I may have actually got my story mixed up here. I think that when I've read about it being released as one thing, I think originally I saw an advert that said, um, uh, are you a fan of computer games? Duh, it was it was an inside a computer magazine, right? Are you a fan of video games? Uh, you can apply to be uh, part of the recordings of this show. So I think at that point, I hadn't actually even been told what the name of the show was, anything like that. I was responding to an advert to appear on TV, or not even necessarily appear on TV, but to take part in... So I can't remember how they normally advertise these things, like, do you want to be part of the audience? It was something like that. It was something like, do you want to be part of this show? And I think I was applying to be in the show as an audience member to watch a show, as far as I knew, was watching people you know, uh, playing a video game live and we were going to be like spectators in it. And I remember that was the origin. And it wasn't, there wasn't an email address. There was no website. There wasn't a number. You had to lick a stamp, put it in an envelope and post your request for it. And uh, I think I did include my number. They called the landline, obviously. So my mum's answering like, who is this guy? He wants to speak to my 14-year-old son. Hands me over the phone as the producer of the show. And they basically had good and bad news for me. The bad news was... Um, that they couldn't offer us uh, any kind of like tickets to come and be a spectator in this show. And then he's like, but let me tell you something. This is the good news. This is what the show is called. I think this is the story now. I'm getting my story better, which was, um, cause it was a long time ago. We're talking 30 years ago, just to kind of give you an idea, right? So it's 30 years ago. Um, yeah, um, this is the show. We've already recorded those segments now, but there's another side to it where... And he's trying to explain to me, and all I was just hearing is, do you remember watching those um, episodes of like Snoopy? Do you remember like the Peanuts cartoons? And whenever the adults would talk, all you hear is, bruh, 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 bruh. so I was just hearing, bruh, 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 show, bruh, 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 video game. Bruh. And I was like, yes, 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 I want to do it. And so I kind of like really panicking, trying to grab a pen that works and some piece of paper, and writing down a, an address for a studio to turn up for, and he gave me his number. And then he said, look, um, have you got any mates at school that you can invite along? Uh, and I was thinking, yeah, I've got some friends that want to come along. And he goes, well, look, you know, ask five of your mates as well. They can come along and then you, you see how it works there. So that's how it came about, basically. It was that phone call having applied to, I think, be like an audience member of some show. And then later on, I started to see articles being released about what this show was all about. And it was starting to build up momentum because I don't even know at the time if they'd actually decided upon who the host would be. And I didn't know how big the host was at the time or would go on to become either. So, yeah, that's the story, man. You really you really just painted the picture so well there, Michael. Um, and it put me really back in that time because it's like, yeah. you know, like you say, it was all about like letters and phone and if you didn't get that information right, then you were screwed. It's not like you could then send it a follow-up WhatsApp or a text or whatever nothing. or an email. It was just no. It was you know you you had to make that phone call count. So I can imagine how much urgency and excitement like you know a fourteen-year-old you had at that moment. And funnily enough, you mentioned obviously the magazines was how you found out about it and. I've been rewatching uh, those those early episodes, and 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 Dominic Diamond is, in, in his intro even says, yeah. you know, if you're too f tight fisted to buy the magazines, then this show is for you. <laughs> yeah, definitely, <laughs> dude. It was expensive magazines. Yeah, man. it was so expensive, and like I say, it was like it was all your pocket money was gone, you know, and it was just um, 
but that was that was the thing magazines like if you think about it even now uh, i'm sure that is the case i could be wrong but i'm pretty sure that the early days of the internet in terms of web pages and web design were based on magazines the same sort of format magazines you know where you've got images and you've got columns that's the designs of web pages were based on magazines and magazines for us was the only way that we could kind of immerse ourselves into whatever your whatever your thing was whatever your niche was there was a magazine for it just as there's, you know, there's there's a there's a uh, there's a Reddit. Post. There, there, you know, there are groups for every kind of niche. It was with magazines, and for us, it was that. It was either football magazines with stickers. I wasn't really into that. Really, I wasn't into. There was a lot of things I just wasn't into. Maybe some some music magazines, but really, it was just like because those computer magazines were telling me about stuff that wasn't around on TV. It wasn't mainstream. I had no way of kind of researching it and getting insights into it. And and exactly that. I I and. This is the other thing. I'm, I did, I, I'm jumping forward a bit, but like this is the other thing as well. It's 1991. These were game cartridges, like 30, 40 pound a pop back then. So I don't know what that works out um, with inflation, but imagine spending 30 pounds 30 odd years ago for a game. Like, yeah, crazy. Yeah, in today's crazy. money, what that would be. It, 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 absolutely. And a lot of those consoles, I really was, uh, you know, so. Um, envious to be honest with you when 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 people were saying they got them because it was like i just couldn't afford them so uh yeah. it was i remember getting a secondhand snes and um like you know way after it was a big thing but being so thrilled with that it, it was yeah it was a big deal and uh i'm just really interested to hear your actual experience of turning up at the studio and filming because us guys watching at home Crazy. you know we yeah. we think we see the show, we finish the, see the finished product, but that's a very different, you know, uh, um, concept because because you you know you're juxtaposing edited scenes, right? With Dominic Diamond, yeah. one minute you're the next, yeah. then maybe it's Patrick Moore, you're talking to him. So you at home, you just in your brain, you're thinking, right? So Michael met Dominic Diamond and Patrick Moore, and he and, you know you have possibly a conversation with them. But tell me how it really was. It was nothing like that, dude. <laughs> I wish it was like that coming up but that that wasn't the only sour taste in the mouth was it because also you got accused of something you at home you just in your brain you're thinking right so michael met dominic diamond and patrick moore and he and you know you have possibly a conversation with him but tell me how it really was it was nothing like that, dude. <laughs> I wish it was like that. There was no meeting anyone. I mean, this is the thing. Like I say, I'd apply to um, to be an audience member to watch this thing live, and 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 it's not like you're applying for tickets for like a show that you know everything. It had never been done before, so we didn't have a clue. We had no benchmark, nothing, nothing to compare it to. And so yeah, so I had this address. And it was, I don't remember if we had to take the day off school. We probably did, because it definitely wouldn't have been in the evening, and I doubt it was on a weekend. I think it was midweek, and I think I had to tell my teachers, and they were kind of okay with it. I had a bit of a hippie school. I went to school in Islington, North London, so they're a little bit hippie-ish. You know, this is a school that had no school uniforms, and which was a pretty big deal. It was one of the reasons why I chose, actually, um, uh, at the time. But... Um, so, so, so that's quite relevant because we're in Islington, North London, and I remember it wasn't that far to get to. So it's probably in some whatever place in wherever it was in Kings Cross or Shoreditch or whatever. Nowhere near as trendy as it is today. But I remember basically taking a bunch of my friends, turning up in this like you know converted warehouse brick exposed brick sort of building, thinking, what have we done? This has been a big scam. We're going to get robbed. Something worse, you know. <laughs> no one knows where we are, and God damn it, we don't even have a phone. We don't even know what a mobile phone is to call in if we get to There's nothing. We just had to turn up at this address, and uh, so the guy came down and kind of briefed us and said, "Right, this is how it's going to work, guys." And you know, he's trying to be a little bit cool with us. He's like one of those adults that was trying to be the cool adult with the kids, and um, we were like, "Yeah, let's just get on." You know, typical like London kids as well. A bit of an attitude, like. And um, it was essentially, right, let me brief you guys what you're going to do. You're going to be standing in this room. And, and I think that was my first experience of, um, uh, what do you call it, a green screen room. It's just basically the whole room was painted green. 
and it was a small room. And I remember thinking, okay, what have we, and he was going, right, you're going to stand there. There's your mark there on the floor. And I want you to be looking into that corner over there. In that corner there is going to be where Games Master is going to be looking at you. And so what we're going to have you do is you're going to put on this headset. And this is the other thing as well, right? So, and you see this in the episode, is you, I'd never experienced putting on one of these VR headsets. And the thing is, this thing wasn't plugged in. It was just purely for the camera, right? Purely for the the, the effect. That's the idea is that you put this thing on and you're, it's way ahead of its time. When you think about it, it's so ahead of its time. You put this thing on and you, you're plugged into the matrix, right? That's the whole point. You put on this headset and now you're into the metaverse of Games Master. Bang, they should definitely remake it yet again. Forget the remake that they've done now. But when I think about it, it was so fucking ahead of their time, right? They're all like, okay, so you put this on, you're in this world, you're going to see the Games Master there and you're going to basically ask him for help because you've been playing this game and you want help from him advice to how to get past this particular um you know um, the big boss at the end of this particular level so i was like okay and as he's explained to me because i'm you know i'm 14 but also a bit stupid i'm like but how does he know what how will he be able to answer the question what game do i choose and he's like no 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 you read this and i was like okay so i'm looking at the lines right so it's, it's starting, the reality is starting to kick in now, right? The glamour's gone. I'm like, I can't read this, but I, I've never... And it was like Spider-Man. I remember one of the games was Spider-Man. I don't remember the second... That, that's the other thing. So I was in two of the episodes as well. I think I was in episode five and eight. Definitely was five. Can't remember the next episode. And, you know, it wasn't a YouTube thing. It was going to be like... Um, I think it was going to be broadcast like a good six months from when we made it. So... And that's a long time for a teenager as well. It's like, imagine six weeks holidays. That just feels like forever. So six months. I'd completely forgotten about this stuff um, after we uh, made it. But yeah, you look into the um, stand on your mark. You put on this uh, VR headset. You're going to look into that corner. And then you're going to read this question. <laughs> and it will make sense when you watch the video. But uh, I'm basically kind of saying to him, it's just so pathetic. It's like... Games Master, I can't get past it. And you're trying to remember these lines because it's not from the heart. It's not genuinely a game that you've played. So, like, you can't really... So now you're acting. So there's like, oh, this is not what I signed up. I don't... can't act. I can't... And I was just nervous as well because you're there in a room with, like, three people, four people, and they're just watching. Your mates are there just kind of like doing all that in the background as well. So they're all doing that, and you've got the lights on, you're sweating. There's none of this, like, let me powder your face and... There's none of that. Just get on there, sweaty teenage boy. Read these lines. Get off. You know, there's next one. Because I remember, I don't think I was the first person to get it. It was a, a, a two mates of mine. And in fact, there was this other kid who nothing to do with us. And he just couldn't get these lines right. And I was thinking, Jesus, just give him a different line. Just give him something else. And they weren't. And he was. they were just like, there was no child protection, mate. There was no one chaperoning this. Nothing was happening. Never mind what used to go on in the 70s and 80s. But there was no one in the room looking out for us. And he just couldn't get these lines what, out. What, what CRB checks? Yeah. <laughs> Not, nothing. Like, and because they were like, because the director was getting really pissed off as well. It's like, right, let's do it again. And da-da-da. And your hands are too far. And you, you, you need to get... And, and I was just thinking, I'm next. <laughs> I'm next. Coming up. So for a good eight weeks minimum, every week we were getting these massive dopamine hits. Because the director was getting really pissed off as well. It's like, right, let's do it again and da-da-da. And you, your hands are too far and you, you, you need to get... And, and I was just thinking, I'm next. <laughs> I'm next. So we're going through this process. And so, yeah, so I get up there, put my headset on. It's the first time I've had... So I'm like lost in the moment like forget the lines wow this thing is really heavy oh wow oh shit it's not even switched on okay fine we'll go i'm not in the matrix <laughs> i'm not in the matrix i'm still sweating away my mates are there still taking a piss all right so now i'm looking there and, and then it's like hello games master and i'm saying my lines and i'm trying to say it really clear and i just felt so unnatural but i was just so excited to be i didn't give a shit but at the time i remember i was just going through this stuff said the lines came off next person went in Next person went in, two, three of my mates went in. Job done, right? Um, I'm pretty sure, so my memory's a little bit hazy, I'm pretty sure I did both episodes that same session. There's no way, I, I, I just cannot believe I would have come back for that again. So I believe I read out two lines uh, on the same day. 
Um, and then my mates are the same. And that was it. Then then we were like, thanks. Very much. There was no like sticker because there was no like Blue Peter badge. There was no like console. <laughs> there, there was no, <laughs> no little memento to take away with you. No like, well done. Here's well, a sticker. No, there was no memento offered to us. But yeah, I'll tell you a little bit on that one as well. But exactly. There was, but I remember being in that room in the studio and then looking over there and seeing like um, a few consoles that were laid out. Because this is like big, like nowadays, it's not uncommon, is it? For someone to have a PlayStation and an Xbox and a this and a that. And it's, you know, I've got one of each. But in those days, it's like choose because these things are expensive. You were either Nintendo, you were, do you know what I mean? It was a big deal. And that was that. And so I'm in this room, see, and I think that they had an SNK Neo Geo as well. I don't know if you remember those bad boys. This is like crazy, right? So I just remember seeing this high, high tech equipment on this table in this room, not being able to touch it, talk about it, just say your line, do these things. Director's getting angry, say your lines, piss off home. And that was just like a magical day. It was still a magical day. It was, it, was it was such a magical day. I was like, I can't believe what we've done. And we didn't even know what it was. We had no idea what it would be about. And then we knew there'd be this long waiting game. And so all of my mates kind of came out of that thinking, some were like, well, that was shit. That was bollocks. Some was like, oh, that was really cool. We all had this like mixed sort of... Um, mixed sort of reactions and feelings to it. Some was like, yeah, it was pretty cool. But then we all just came away. Next day we had geography lesson or whatever, and just it was just another day, right? And I guess I mean putting myself in your shoes as a kid, especially you know, because because at that age as well, I can imagine you feeling a sense of carrying the weight of responsibility because you're the one that's got them all involved. So it's like if oh, they, they think it's it. shit, but they but they loved it, yeah, yeah, yeah. But they loved it because it's, there's nothing to compare it to, and. It, it did give me a little bit of a boost as well in, in the sense that they're like, wow, man, you, you know, you sorted us out. You, you, like, you hooked us up with something that you just couldn't compare it to anything. I, it wasn't like, you couldn't compare it to anything. Do you know what I mean? So I think that it, was really... It, it's crazy, isn't it? I mean, is it that, that's why I was so interested to do this interview, not just because of the whole, because of the gaming and the channel, but, but just because of the, it's an experience that not a lot of people will, will get to have in their lives. 100% and this is the thing as well so I took five mates along with me and you'll see them in the videos and I've got to send them copies of it right so like Neil, Rose, Charlie um, I took, there's a few of them right uh, I don't know whether or not they like me to mention it it's not the point, the point is this I was definitely then a like hardcore fan so for me it was like do you know what I mean it's like wow you know they, they'd answered, they replied to me they invited me along so for me it was like you know, it wasn't about the rubbish studio and the irate director. And it wasn't about any of that. It was like, I've actually, I remember having this realization as a 14 year old kid thinking, wow, I'm actually part of this. I've contributed my little piece to this. So yeah. And over time as well, like I've, I've, I've told this story, but much shorter version of this story to people over the last 30 years at different points, two, three times, not many times. Um, and it's like, wow, you want us like, yeah, I know. Because of YouTube. Because, because of YouTube, YouTube exactly. Actually. Yeah. I was going to say, because you can still see the episode on YouTube. You can still look at it. It's, it's just incredible. Th all these years on, you, you, you've you you've kind of made a little bit of history there. And I, I could have possibly watched that very episode or episodes. Because I used to watch this show. So it is. It's, it's extraordinary that you've been on it. But, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. We it's talked about okay. mementos. Yeah. And uh, I'd like you to tell us a little, there was a bit of a sting in the tail. So oh why don't you God. talk us about that? Talk, talk us through that. So, so, so this is the thing, right? Exactly. So I did. So I did two episodes. We all did our episodes. So just, just to put a little bit more context to this. Eventually, this thing is broadcast on Channel Four, I believe, right? And, and thinking about it, it's your typical Channel Four show. It was just a ton, you know. It was just. It was definitely not a BBC or an ITV thing. It was a Channel Four show. Came out. And I remember waiting for this thing to come up because, you know, there was no pre-recording. It was just you had to be there in front of your TV. If you missed it, you're done, right? It was broadcast whatever time it was, 6, 6, 30, 7 p.m., Channel 4. Watch the first episode. I'm not in it. So I didn't know which episode I was going to be in at the time. But I remember that watching the first episode, and it wasn't me. It was my mate. It came on, my schoolmate. And I was like, oh, my God. Because now they've got the background effects. And, you know, forget. Well, this is the thing, right? So 
And it was pretty high tech for his time. <laughs> you look at it now, you go, what is that? But at the time, I'm watching now, everything just clicked and made sense. You know, that uh, the, the director's sort of vision of it. And you know, he says this thing, then the next day we go into school. Whoa, we saw you last night. This is amazing. Da, da, da. And it was this big deal. And then I remember he was so cool. He acknowledged it to me. He's like, Mike, thank you for sending, thank you for inviting me along to it. That was so cool, right? So the point is, he did a really good episode, right? He asked a great question, great answer, came into school the next day, it was all good. And then I remember starting to get the sweats thinking about remembering that six months earlier, and I'd asked this stupid question about a game I'd never played. And it was a line that was just like, it just didn't feel right at the time. It didn't sound right. And then I was like, no, nah, you're probably just imagining why it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad, right? And so this episode gets aired where I'm standing there and I'm taking his headset off and I'm looking up at this uh you know, a fictitious games master that's there in the corner. And it was this, oh, dude, it was this, uh, it was games, it was a uh, Spider-Man, it was a Spider-Man game. It was a crap game as well. It's the thing, it was like, of all these games that are out there, I wish I'd asked. So there's this end of level boss and I'm saying something like, um, games master, how do I get past this round? Because the guy keeps ramming me. In Spider-Man, I can always reach the forklift boss, but he keeps ramming me. What am I doing wrong? Right, <laughs> I remember at the time thinking this doesn't sound right. <laughs> and also, when I'm saying this line at the time, my mates are in the background, like just <laughs> laughing, pissing themselves, and I'm thinking, no, nah, this doesn't sound right because there's this guy that basically is bad, and I think he's got like this uh, bulldozer or some contraption where he he literally slams you against the the brick wall at a spot if you don't jump over it in time. And I was saying to him, he keeps ramming me, and I was like. It should be something like, I keep getting crushed, I keep getting run over. Maybe it's just a director's sixth sense of humour, right? So then this this episode gets broadcast and I'm watching it. And I'm hearing myself going, he keeps ramming me. And I don't remember if my brother was there at the time or he later phones me up. I, can't, I don't think he was there. I think he must have found me and went, he keeps ramming me. <laughs> It keeps ramming me. So that line, and you'll see that episode. I think it's episode five, but uh, I could be maybe it's episode eight or something like that. It definitely wasn't the first two or three. I wasn't in until a bit later on. I was absolutely mortified, dude. Like, I think they were kind of okay with me at school because it wasn't everyone's cup of tea. The whole video game thing it wasn't that big. But the friends around me is like, yeah, he he he's ramming me. My like good friends was... always do. <laughs> <laughs> nice, yeah, support you all the way. I mean, the thing is as well, it's it because because you've already built it up in your mind. Any, <laughs> any reference to it is just going to support you, like cold sweats time, you know. Yeah, oh my God. I was so mortified and I was just, I just, I got over it though because it was like, I don't care, I'm part of this show, I'm part of this show. But yeah, that line, man, he, he keeps ramming me. What can I do? He keeps ramming me. I'm <laughs> looking at the screen. But that, that wasn't the only sour taste in the mouth, was it? Because also, you got accused of something. And you've got to, yeah, tell us about that as well. Yeah, yeah, I totally forgot about that because I was in that moment. But you're right. Okay, so do you remember how I said you went, well, I remember being in a room and seeing that on the table, they still had all the camera equipment. This is when we're filming in their studio. I remember seeing on the table, they had all these different consoles there. And I was like, wow, that's what it looks like. You know, seeing something... Because this stuff was like in Japan and the US, it hadn't quite come out in the UK yet. So I'd only ever seen it in magazines. It's like anything in life that you'll see for the first time in real life. You know, that's why I guess like these like, um, what do they call these YouTube videos? Unpackaging videos? What are they called when they just unwrap stuff? Yeah, unboxing. People that unbox because there are people out there that would never, ever see that in real life, ever. And there are millions of people like that, right? So back in those days, I was one of those people who's like, wow, I'm seeing what it looks like there. I just remember that image of seeing this kind of equipment on the chairs, thinking, oh, that's a lot bigger than I thought it would be smaller. So yeah, you're exactly right. So it was the next day, or maybe it was the day after that, but it's after we, sh we did the filming, I got a phone call on the landline, picks it up. My mum's like, there's some guy wanting to speak to you, not your teacher. Hi, and he goes, yeah, how's it going? Yeah, I'm really glad you came down. It's all like building up, right? It was just like, this was a weird was this, was this the cool guy that was trying to be all cool to begin with, or do you reckon? He was trying to be all cool, and, you know, I'm 14. I'm thinking, oh, they want to invite me back. They want to do some more episodes. <laughs> they want to introduce me to Dominic. Nah, 
They, you know, I thought it was one of those phone calls. You made a really good impression saying ramming me. We want to something, right? So he goes, da, 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 yeah, blah, blah, blah. He goes, oh, by the way, do you remember we had all these consoles and stuff in the studio? Again, I'm thinking, do you want to? You want to give me one of those? You want to kind of something? How would you like something? Because I do remember thinking it was like after a film, we were just sent away. There was no nothing. And uh, right, long story short, he says to me, um, yeah, it went missing. Basically, I don't know if it was the Neo Geo, but one or two of the consoles because they just went missing. And I just wanted to know if you saw it, know anything about it. And obviously I'm disappointed because the phone call has not come back to the show. It's not. Would you like one of these consoles? It's none of those things that were going through my mind. It was, did you nick something? I was like, no. And then I thought, oh my God, probably was one of my mates in the classroom that nicked this, probably. Do you know what I mean? Like, my heart sank. And then I was thinking, well, there were other kids there too, to be fair. It wasn't just my mate. It wasn't just my crew. But it was one of those, like... Oh, man. What an anticlimax. Because there you are, you're thinking... Oh, they've remembered. They, they should. They, they, were, they were thinking of giving me one of these things yeah, at the time, but yeah. they just got too busy. So here they are. They're calling me to give me one of those lovely consoles. I know. I know. And now they're accusing you of stealing. I know, and it does. It does come back to you. But again, like I say, it took some time until it was actually aired on TV. I'd forgotten all about that stuff once I saw those episodes on TV because, you know, it wasn't just me on TV. I was watching every week, one, because I loved the show anyway. Two, every time it would come on, it would be a different one of our mates. It, it wasn't just me. It was like all of my mates. So each episode that would be broadcast, I knew the next day there would be this, like, reaction at school from other school kids. They were like, wow, how are all these kids on the show? And every time, like, no, it was me. It was Mike. And Mike, Mike got us on the show. Mike got us on the show. So I had that kind of uh, connection with it. And so I'd long since forgotten about that. But yeah, when you think about all of the events that took up, led up to that. As, I mean, that that's cool. And, and of course, yeah, that, that's a really good point, isn't it? Because because you basically filmed several episodes worth of clips all in one day. Yeah. You then had the sort of almost like this uh, um, period where you get like a continued buzz. So it wasn't just like, yes, you got exactly. to it all in the way, but then you were like reliving it week by week, seeing your friends. You going couldn't on. binge watch it. Right. You can't binge watch games. You can't you couldn't binge watch anything. You you waited every week, right? So we all did two questions. And there were at least four of us. So that's eight episodes. And so for a good eight weeks minimum, every week we were getting these massive dopamine hits that, you know, deplete your system and then another week it'll be another one and then another one and it was just like yeah it just went on forever for me and I don't know how many seasons it went on to do because then by that point I just got caught up in GCSEs left school went into the real world and then years later years later you know it's like in the early days of YouTube like we went from watching the like two minute clips of cat videos and jokes and all this sort of stuff and then we started to get better bandwidth so we could watch longer and longer clips. And then I remember everyone has gone through this, or right? anyone like our sort of age especially, you get to your point in your YouTube uh, experience where you go, let me, do you remember that thing? And then you start to search for things from, from your childhood. It's just very different, right? Anyone knows this above the age of 35, I would imagine, really, or... It was just stuff that was just lost in the archives of our memories, right? It was something that maybe we had on VHS or Betamax or it was a show on TV. And so I was just going through this phase of just bringing up stuff from my memory banks and trying to kind of going, that's how I remember that actually was like that. Wow, the disparity between how I remember what it actually was like. And I was just going through this stuff and then something happened. I was like, Games Master, typed it in and then... Yeah, found the episodes on there. So God bless whoever, as I don't think they're official uploads. God bless whoever uploaded them. You took the words right out of my mouth. I was going to say, God bless mm. these people that upload, <laughs> find these things and upload them. It's amazing. Uh, but Michael, it's been such a pleasure hearing about your experience. And uh, it really has like taken me back. So um, it must be 10 times that for you, having having had that amazing experience. 100%. So yeah, absolute 100%. pleasure. And uh and uh, let's do this again. Yeah, absolutely, man. There's so many, like, there are so many stories I haven't mentioned in this short video. So, like, you know, we've been talking about 30 minutes or so, but, like, a lot of happened. A lot happened along the way. But that was absolutely a significant point of my childhood. 
you know, combining my geeky sort of pleasures and uh, just just create and to be able to have shared that with people close to me at the time as well. It's just yeah, just a true experience. So thank you. Yeah, thank you for letting me relive that with you as well. All right, mate. Well, absolute pleasure, and thank you so much once again. And uh, yeah, see you in the next one. <laughs>